What's up, everybody? It's Kim. Welcome to Deck to None. It's been forever since I jumped on here, and I decided this video is going to be a little bit of a chit chat vlog style video. This is my first attempt at vlogging, but I have so much to update you on. So you're going to see me running a few errands, um, chat with you a little bit while I'm in my car, and just clips throughout the past uh, few days that I've been like working in my house, getting everything together to sell it. And let me fill you in on all the good that's been happening and some of the bad. So stay tuned. I'm about to go to the store to get some stuff from Home Depot and Walmart. Just a couple of things. I really don't want to spend very much money and um, to cover my concrete steps, which look really janky. It looked like this when we bought it. I patched, this whole thing was just a, like a gaping hole and I put like concrete patch on there. I definitely have to sand it. I don't know if I can still, if I can actually do that or if it's too dry. And then it, you could just see straight through the step from one side to the other and it looks just horrible and then that's previous paint from whatever the you know the owner did before that's chipping and then on the other side it looks terrible Ugh, yuck let's sh let me tell you about my garage <laughs> this pro this garage has given me more problems than a little bit like it I, I don't understand why this garage is just determined to be like the thorn in my flesh I okay I some of you might remember this already it was like a few months back I was talking about how my garage door needed fixing we were having uh, problems where it just wouldn't it, it wouldn't open and close properly and I'm trying to think the last time oh my gosh I you've heard me talk about my garage multiple times on this channel and have someone come out you've you've known this like multiple times to do something with this garage bars were replaced I don't even remember like everything I've had like I said multiple people and now Okay, uh, about a month ago, I had a whole new door put in. You don't know this because it was right after we drove back from Georgia. And we're going to unload the car with all our stuff, pull in. The door just like wouldn't. Um, my husband had to use it, the manual. Like he had to turn it to manual because it, the garage door opener, you know, the power opener wasn't working properly. So he went to go open it up manually and the whole thing was just like, and it just went wonky. It was all shifted to one side. It looked like it was just going to fall down. Like part of it was like, like hovering. And I was like, ah, get out, get out, get out. You know, <laughs> and like screws were dropping. I mean, I saw it was like the craziest sight. I just see the door like fly upwards because it was closed, you know, for our trip. And here he is, like, lifting it, and it looked like he just yanked it open so fast and hard, he said he barely touched it. I don't know, if you've heard me talk about my husband in the in past videos, how he's like my little Bam Bam, I'm like, yeah, that seemed like a lot of force you to use there. And he's like, no, I barely touched it. So he's super strong, We're, <laughs> we won't get into that. Um, but, yeah. It looked crazy. So they came out and they put it a whole new door in and it was great, right? That was, okay, it's July now. It was like early June, I think. I think it was like early June. Then last week, we were coming home from our cleaning job and unloaded the car. My husband pressed the, you know, the button for the garage to close. And we're just inside, 
chilling and then he looks and he's like oh I guess I forgot to close the garage I'm like oh, okay so he pushes it again and then he watched where the garage was like er, er, you know where it comes down a little bit and it's like oh someone just ran through the garage and it's got the sensor and it goes back up you know that's what it looked like er, oh, and it's back up down up oh, back up and he's like mind you we just cleaned out our garage <laughs> threw everything away because we are in the process of selling this house so there's like nothing in the garage except for some stuff we're gonna sell that's like neatly placed along the side of the garage so he's like what could possibly be in the way goes out looks around nothing the thing won't it won't close so we had someone come out last week I think and put in new sensors now, thankfully, it's it's not super expensive. The garage door was two thousand dollars, I think. I'm like brilliant. Like, who has money for this? I'm in the middle of something else, and I just had to drop two grand. So then, sensors had to be replaced. That's just under three hundred dollars. Um, whatever. And then today today the garage door won't budge it worked great for a week but nothing none of the but the button on the wall inside <laughs> doesn't do anything he pushes it it's not doing anything so of course our remote isn't working i mean come this is so frustrating i just want to fill you in i don't even know if anyone's going to watch this video there's probably like a couple of people that are interested in what's been going on with me so i'm talking to those people i guess um i'm i want to say that i'm back like i will be back you'll see more of me even though my life is so chaotic but i do i i'm just gonna just get in the habit of turning on the camera and bringing you with me so you can see what's going on with me instead of me just being missing in action you know i don't actually want to do that but okay i should show you what i'm looking at there's someone had two beautiful huskies they were just walking and it distracted me oh gosh this is my problem what was i talking about i should just get used to just turning on the camera and bringing you guys with me but i i want to tell you why I've been so MIA. Wait, do you see my shirt? You've seen me in this shirt many times before, if you've been here. Take time to breathe. I got this in Colorado. What's up, Colorado? I was visiting a friend. Love that. I <laughs> love my shirt. <laughs> I'm basically doing this right now. I've been doing this. I've been taking time to breathe. Um, Losing a child, obviously, is probably, I don't know if, I mean, it could be the, the hardest loss. I, mean, I guess it depends on who you're talking to, but so let me just, or, or who's talking. So let me just speak for my husband and I. It has been the hardest thing we've ever faced in our marriage. I've had a few family members pass away since I've been married uh, my, my parents actually I don't know why I said a few my parents and that was <laughs> difficult but our daughter Mariah was my daughter through marriage I helped take care of her for 18 and a half years just under 19 years but my husband was a single parent for many years he had 32 years 32 years of being a, a doting dad. She had disabilities, so and she was mentally impaired. She had some physical limitations as well. So we did a lot for her. This was constant care every single day. So I just imagine that relationship where you are always with this person because, well, they need you. And that's the dynamic like everywhere you go they go you know unless you want you know that personal date time or whatever which we do sometimes and we get our friend to watch her but it's it was it was our life 
our, our entire marriage, plus I had a son too, so we had two kids in the house for the first uh, nine years of our marriage, I believe. For nine years, it was we, we had two kids that we were raising. And then my, my son you know, <laughs> turned 18. And so, yeah, nine years. Um, but it, it was like we had a toddler for, for me. I've only been around with her for 18 and a half years. But it was like I was raising a toddler for 18 and a half years. Imagine that time frame. It's not just three years. It's not, you know, it's not 18 and a half years. You've, you've got the, the habits and the routine of like a parent being the parent with the toddler, you know, all the things that you would do with your young little kid, because that's how she was. Her mental capacity kind of varied, but I feel like she never got past like seven as far as like intellectually things that she would talk about she she never learned to read that was just something but she could talk she talked a lot and she she was so she was just a big part of her life you know she was always laughing she was just uh, so cute I mean she had a hard life but she was always able to just live life and not be focused on all her problems and I'm kind of like I use her example to take a lesson you know from her you know hey life is not great you get dealt a raw hand it stinks but it's okay to laugh and and to just enjoy life the way it is it's okay you know I don't know she just without her trying just her being herself she taught me so much I'm so grateful to that kid. It's funny saying a kid, she's 32 years old, but if you knew her, you'd be like, no one thinks that Mariah was not a kid, except for people that are special. <laughs> and you know, they exist. Um, yeah, she, everyone that got to know her is like, like she, she forever has a special place in their heart. That's our Mariah. So, my husband is going through, he's still going through a lot. And I want to talk about what he's going through, maybe to talk to people that maybe are dealing with someone that's grieving a loss. Um, and it could be like the loss of a marriage too. It, it, that's also feels like a death when you're going through a divorce. I know that feeling personally. I went through a divorce um, almost 20 years ago, <laughs> now that I think about it. And I, that, that you do, you have to go through the, like this mourning phase. It is, it's a death of the life that you knew. This is hard. And my husband is having a really difficult time because people that he, that were around, that, that knew him, know him, uh, knew us for years are having a hard time accepting the change in him and I just feel like that is so unfair and I don't know if they think that they're doing something good like if they're actually helping they might think that but he's getting advice more than once like more than one occasion where some, you know, people will tell him, like, you know, if you just, we need you to be more, like, social and, and, and joke around and talk to everybody and don't, don't tell people that you're only doing okay if you're, you don't, because it, it hurts their feelings. Like, they don't, they don't like that. They want you to be good. And, I mean, listen, I want my husband to be good. My husband wants to be good, but still in all, he's dealing with a heavy, painful, 
trial. Like, his heart is just ripped to shreds. So, if he could just snap his fingers and be okay, and just oh, be the happy guy that he was a year and a half ago, um, I think he would do it, for sure. But that's not realistic. He's going through a lot. He And he needs the time to grieve. So, like, I would... I would love to talk to them personally, but I don't um, want to make his situation any worse. Like, I don't want to make it feel like I'm starting anything with anybody or anything like that. Causing problems, but I don't have a problem saying, you know, speaking my mind in a, in a polite, you know, way. Not to be disrespectful, but it's like, hey, please, everybody grieves, um on an individual basis. Everybody is different. We're all not the same. We could go through the same type of loss, like it falls under the same exact category. Even like with another person with a disabled child that they were raising and, you know, their child was, a you know, technically age-wise an adult like us. It still doesn't mean <laughs> that we're going to grieve the same way because everybody is different. If it takes this man several years let it take him several years. And I feel like it's it's taking him longer because of this added pressure on him to put on a mask, to pretend to be someone he's not. Because this is the vice he's getting. Just basically, you know, pretend or tell them you're doing good. Why? I mean, what? And I'm sure they're not thinking it through after, like, saying this to him. They're not thinking of how it sounds. Does that even make sense to fake it, like, to be fake with people? No. That's stupid. We're just not those people. We are not those people. We do not pretend to be something we're not. We just, that's just not us. We're realistic. We're genuine. We're authentic. What you see is what you get, you know, and we, I think what's really hard for us because of the type of people that we are, when someone is going through a hard time, we are moved to be there for them. Like we're going to do whatever we can to comfort them, to encourage them, to strengthen them. That's, that's how we've been trained, you know, through our study of the scriptures and imitating the Christ like this is who we are at the core of our being thankfully this is who we've become you know with God's help so we kind of expected other people to be sim someone to be like that to be like us not I mean I'm not like I mean gosh we're so amazing but just to have that empathy to have that desire to just be a good friend, you know, to accept us for who we are and where we're at in life right now, and just be understanding and compassionate. Yeah, we expected somebody, you know. I mean, there's a few people, don't get me wrong, but it unfortunately, the majority that we're getting now, and I'm not talking about like our close friends, people that like know us know us um i'm not including them but of course they're they're ride or die you know but just these uh, there's just been other people that are making it so difficult you know i don't and it i just i feel bad because i think they want to help but they're making it harder they're stressing him out they're it's like just let him live he's got to grieve he's got to go through this he, he, the fact that he's still out there, he still volunteers his time, a lot of it to um, lift others up and to assist them. He's still doing that. He's always focused on encouraging people. And it would be nice just to get a little, you know, a little, a little room. A little space to be able to go through the process his the grieving process that he needs to go through it would be nice if everybody 
Everybody allowed him that. And not just a few people, you know? So, I said all of that, because I don't want to make this video so long, but I said all of that to say that because, like, his depression is kind of... I feel like it's exasperated now because of the this added pressure to to not be himself to that he's not allowed to be himself is making it worse like it's like knocking him out like not knocking his strength out like he just like oh, I don't have it in me this is so hard and I'm just like this is this is horrible this is so painful to watch and so it's hard on me so I struggle because I, there's so many things that I want to do. I, you know, wanted to be consistent with my videos here. I know you guys have been so supportive when it was like a year ago. Everybody was saying, take the time. Take time. We'll be here when you return. Don't worry about us. And I appreciate that. And I wasn't trying to disappear. Like, I just wasn't. Ooh, my hand is cramping. <laughs> this is easy to hold this. Um, but then you see, I kind of did recently. I, I kind of did. And that was like me. I was exhausted and we had taken the trip down to Georgia and we, we were like, oh my gosh, our life is completely changing. So it was so much thrown on my plate because it was like, now you got to get your house ready to sell. We are definitely moving to Georgia. The trip was fabulous. We're, we're all set up. We got a place to live. We have friends like awesome friends down there now we can't wait to get back to them um but it was like so much that I had to take care of as soon as I stepped back into town first thing was the garage door <laughs> that was such a stress and then it was just getting the house ready you know so I've been like in my a and then with my husband's emotional state it's been harder you know, it's just been hard for me. But I said, even he said, just just turn on the camera and tell everybody that how difficult it is. And I was like, who who wants to hear that? But I, if I'm just going to keep it real, I'm, I'm, well, then I might as well do that. And so, yeah. So today I just wanted to kind of brief you. And then you're going to see just more of my life my husband will be in the videos I don't know if I know eventually you'll see him but you'll at least hear more of him in the background he said he he said he doesn't mind being in the videos he understands that I'm trying to let more of my life in these videos because everything is um changing the the focus of my channel is just going to be how we're making it how we're living we're, without making a lot of money, you know, what we're doing to live simply, to live debt-free from here on out. That is my, I don't want to take on any more debt for anything. So I have to make sure that I have, I'm saving money. So I have that stash in case, you know, I need a large sum of money. And then just making wise choices when I do have to spend money, making sure I'm not, you know, getting ripped off. You're going to see a lot of DIY stuff, budget things like fixing things, fixing things, not fixing, but just making a home presentable <laughs> to sell. You'll see that. And then when we move, you'll see how I kind of make the little, it's a mobile home. So you'll see how I make the little mobile home um, a cozy home for us. I'll do the renter friendly you know updates and then I'll share that on my channel like how to brighten a space when it's not your own like you don't own it you know um, because I need that and plus I'll be vlogging and showing you guys and when I attempted to film down there you could not see it was the everything was so dark it looked you couldn't see me really and I you know I'm I'm really all about good lighting <laughs> <laughs> when I like good lighting has to be a part of my videos because I'm neurotic when it comes to lighting. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not going to do a video with, with bad lighting. I can't. So, yep. Please, I hope they let me do that. But if not, hey, I'm still going to find a way to do it without, you know, permanently changing their 
their home because I dark spaces make me depressed. Yeah, my channel is just gonna be Crazy Kim being herself and just trying to make it with you know on a low low income right so i hope you stick with me and yeah enjoy the ride along with me because that is my plan so talk to you soon so this is my very first time trying to vlog while shopping or well, while in the store and i so please be gentle with me um this is a new thing this is a new way of me doing my youtube channel so bear with me but can i just tell you how strange i feel right now the i'm trying not <laughs> to like be so obvious but i'm noticing like people are kind of like looking at me like smirking and <laughs> so stupid I'm not even gonna lie I even think people are like avoiding me but anyway I hope I get comfortable with this and this becomes <laughs> oh my gosh. I hope this becomes second nature this is so weird you guys oh the, those content creators that do this all the time I just admire them because I feel like the biggest weirdo I'm trying I'm trying to be normal I really am and then I'm trying not to make eye contact with anybody that's walking by me <laughs> so anywho we're making our way to the paint area uh yeah and I'm I'm crashing into things you might real I don't you might hear it. <laughs> I just noticed like people looking at me you might hear it like if you hear like a you know a car crashing that is me <laughs> that is me <laughs> look at this little accident <laughs> a little car accident i'm just slamming into stuff because i'm trying to pretend like i'm cool with this camera <laughs> I'm walking with the cart behind me and i'm slamming into the aisles and you know the yeah it's not it's not a pretty sight but anyway, we're getting there. We're getting to the hardware department. <laughs> okay. So, I think this is a section. Hold on. All right, not this. This is the stuff that I want. And, but I want the satin and I want it to be gray. And I noticed the kind that I want, every single can is beat to death. We have three can no that's not the right can <laughs> i grabbed the wrong can but that's okay i end up switching it out for the beat up can yeah for one of those so that's actually the one i want yep that's what i ended up getting that one so i got the <laughs> i got the paint from walmart then I had to hurry up and run home to help my husband with our vacuum cleaner because we have multiple Dyson vacuums, well two Dyson vacuums, and he was trying to use the vacuum that we use in the house, not the one that we use to clean other people's houses with, uh, to vacuum and he was like, the piece doesn't fit, I don't understand what's going on, and I had to come home and show him where I keep the all the pieces, so... It was confusing for him because they aren't actually interchangeable the two models you can't use the same parts even though they look the same they don't fit you can't swap them out so I had to run home instead of going straight to Home Depot so now I'm going back out gonna go to Home Depot good thing that I did come home because we have our stupid front door knob fell off <laughs> the things with this house is ridiculous the front door knob fell off I was like this makes no sense when I I just pulled the screws out to like really look at it because it's literally been taped on for six months and I'm thinking the screws are too short for our front door our door is too thick for those screws that the doorknob came with. 
I don't know why that is the case, but it is. I mean, it held for a few years. It was a little loose, but I know how to put doorknobs on, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, it, fi it finally fell off, and it's, yeah. I'm going to see if, can I just get a longer screw? And then a couple of roller um, sleeves, painting sleeves. And then I think that's it. And then I'm going to just go to work before it starts raining. Time is probably not on my side, but I'm going to get going. All right, talk to you in a bit. Okay, so this was kind of annoying because there's a million and a half screws in there and I'm not sure if I got the right one. But I have a friend that works there, so he was trying to help me. He thinks it should work. <laughs> but if it doesn't, I'll be back to return it. in there I oh Kim I'm going back in I totally forgot the sleeves I just was so flustered with the screw all right oh my gosh so I'm super hot <laughs> I don't know can you see that I'm sweating it's it's 90 that's what's going on outside 90 degrees so I thought I was going to put the patio paint porch paint i'll show you what i got i thought i was going to do this today i really did i had all types of intention let's see porch and floor satin finish just a gray it's not really what i wanted i'm not sure how great it's gonna look however the cement patch the like little cement that I bought to plug in the cracks is like this gray color so I was like well this can camouflage it but I don't know it's still gonna be lumpy and bumpy but at least the two different cements concrete you know coloring won't be so different from one another so that's that um yeah who knows what that's gonna look like and then the screws for my front door it worked I'm really excited the door I'm really I'm really excited that my front door works like a normal door no like seriously this <laughs> doorknob gave me so much problem it is actually hard to put it on in the first place but I think I know what I did I think I had this upside down I really because when I took it off I noticed that the curve was on the wrong side like what's up everybody I figured I better come on here and do a quick update so let me just tell you this video if you've watched it from the beginning let me thank you thank you so much it's so old I've been working on this video for like days oh my gosh but I've else I, oh my gosh okay 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 calm it down Kim but I'm like let's pop in there and give them a quick update number one never ever got out there and worked on that front step it still looks hideous what you guys saw is exactly what it looks like I did do some painting along the foundation of the house trying to make it look cute but I only did two sides so the other two look gross but the front looks cute and one side looks cute. So yeah, there's that. Um, so I painted the foundation white, only on two sides. But let me tell you, our house has been on the market for two days. Two days, y'all. Right now, we have five offers. Five offers, okay. 
<sighs> so open house tomorrow from one to three and then our realtor is letting everyone know come with your highest and best offer by 5 p.m tomorrow so our plan is is to sit down about six o'clock and go through the offers and pick the one that you know we feel like works best for us so oh my lanta i am like i'm excited i'm still kind of sick i'm a little nervous anxious and when i say anxious it's just when i have so much in front of me you know what i mean i have to move i have so much stuff that i have to sell I hate selling. I hate, I literally, I hate, ooh, the lighting looks great here. This is where I usually film. Well, where I used to. Like, you see that? In front of the window. <laughs> Anywho, back, back. Come on, Kim, stop being so distracted. Um, I hate selling stuff. We, all of our furniture, it's like must go. So everything you see in my house, literally everything you see in my house is for sale <laughs> there's just a few things we'll be keeping like my file cabinet i don't think you guys see that <laughs> that's what this area looks like now this is where my desk used to be where i was filming all my youtube videos now it's like a sitting space so wait let's give you the real view so everything everything is for sale i gotta keep that but all that stuff i have to sell mirror get rid of it lamp tables get rid of couch ottomans storage ottomans if you don't have a lot of storage like this house you need storage ottomans <sighs> chair plants i'll probably take with me let's keep it moving while i'm showing you uh finally finished the well not finally finished room I, this has been finished for a while uh this i have to keep youtube business uh that's gonna be sold with the other chairs get rid of that of course keep anything that's a you know camera equipment lighting stuff keep uh i feel like i'll probably keep that i don't i mean i don't know get rid of that <laughs> um yeah okay and then let's go into my bedroom i have never done this and welcome to my bedroom welcome to the bedroom y'all um yeah look everything everything in the bedroom this is not real <laughs> this is where i do my makeup that's just a piece of glass that went on this really cute uh pedestal table that was a set from my mom's house I broke the pedestals when I moved here, so it's just on some like Walmart bookshelves or whatever. Uh, so it's not like I'm gonna sell that. I'm probably gonna try to <laughs> save the glass. Um, but like all of these things, I I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and get rid of. Like, you know, you see, I had to make storage. This house is so ridiculous. 1955, y'all. Super small. Everything is so small. Tiny closet. Tiny. Oh, that's the end cabbage patch kids tiny closet the end yeah my bedroom welcome welcome um yeah i have to get rid of everything in my house in the kitchen if you guys know anybody that needs <laughs> that needs furniture well, let me know everything must go so here's the table and that chair selling probably selling that cabinet that's where I have to put all my shoes. Like, I'm not even joking. I don't have a sword. I don't know. Selling. Selling. I, I don't mean, I don't guess. I don't know. Yeah. And then the basement. I think that the buyers might want our basement gym because all of our offers were above ask. Oh wait, we had five offers, but one of them just canceled because they were gonna compete 
with the highest offer, but it went too high for them. So now we have four offers. Let me let me let me correct the information. So yeah, I feel like most people do want or the ones that are like over twenty thousand dollars at least $20,000 over our asking price, I feel like they want the basement gym, which is ideal for us, just to go ahead and sell it with the house. Because we gotta sell it anyway, we just, we don't have space. My husband's like, ah, a little hurt, he's getting rid of his baby. We've had that equipment for a long time and you know, got it to where it's like perfect. Like he has everything that he needs for his gym. And you know, he used to rent his own space. So he had like a studio uh, space that he fully stocked himself with. And so that's why we have like so much gym equipment and it looks like that. It's not like we just decided to have a home gym. It just turns out when we bought this house that we needed a place to put all the equipment because he decided not to rent his own space anymore, but just to rent um, to pay someone else that has their space and just to pay to train his clients out of their gym. So that's what he's doing now. And he's going to continue to do that because, you know, 15 years of, you know, renting your own space, it, there's a lot that goes into that, you know, and, you know, it just got to be more chaotic and a hassle. And he's, we're all about simplification, simplifying our lives. So it's easier to do it this way. So we gotta say goodbye to all of the gym equipment, which it's been a blessing to have a gym in your house, I must say, for him, especially me, kinda. But yeah, that's the update. We're sitting on four offers as of yet before our open house, which is tomorrow. So I know the next time I talk to you guys, I'll be like, okay, we sold our house. Um. Ah, I've never lived out of state. I've never moved out of state. I've never done this. This is huge. Oh my gosh. So I'll probably take you along with me to watch me get everything in order. I don't know. Like pack up and oh, so much. Ugh. But yeah, that's what I'm working with. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for being here. I will talk to you soon. Bye. I was actually taking a video.